Hello Floss Tube, this is Dina and today is Friday and it is January 27th so I'm almost at the end of this month I'll be stopping here in a few minutes and changing my whip on my scroll, scroll frame to roll it up to go to the next section so I thought it would be a good time to give you an update on uh, this piece this is um, Bewitched and I'll show it to you now before I move it. This is where I've gotten to on here. Um, I'll, if I have a picture of it, I'll show you where I started. But I originally had, um, I had gotten her hat, head and hair and face and a little bit of her dress done, I think the last time that I shared her with you. So on this rotation, I've gotten quite a bit done, I think. Um, I worked my way over here by doing a little bit of the dress or the, the coat and then coming down on the skin until I could get to the hand that would lead me to the staff of the crystal ball. So then I worked my way up, did the crystal ball and the bird, and I've started working now on the, um, I've started working now on the ribbon that goes with that. And so I think I've made some pretty good progress for this rotation uh, on this piece. I'm really enjoying it. It's so fun. Uh, it's going very well. And now what I will do is roll it up further on the scroll frame and start working uh, on this section that goes across here so that way I can keep rolling it as I go up. Now I want to show you something I did just because I couldn't stand it. I had to see what they'd look like but there are four treasures. There's one, two, three, and then one over here on her ribbon. Four. It's right up here. Right there. They're kind of blend in, but they're so, so cute. And you attach the little treasures with a bead in the center. Um, but since I'm rolling this up on my frame, I think I can protect them uh, well enough. And if I can't, I will just do the rest of it in a small Q-snap that goes below them. Um, but I just wanted to see where they were and how they looked. I'm not doing any beading. There's a lot of beading in this piece, and I'm not doing any of that until I finish stitching it. But I just wanted to see what those little treasures look like, and I think they're precious. So that's all um, the update on this piece today, and I'll be adjusting where it is on the scroll frame, and then next time it shows up in my rotation, I'll be ready for it. So I hope you're having a great day stitching, and I will talk to you next time. Bye. Hello Floss Tube. this is Dina. I just wanted to share with you a fully finished object. I picked this up from the framer uh, this past week and I'm about ready to package it up and ship it off to my friends. So I wanted to share Beach Babies with you. Fully framed, ready to go. <laughs> Here it is. I'll try to get back far enough where you can see the whole piece. And I want to get close enough for you to see this frame. This frame is, I chose to look very much like the weathered fence post that you see in the picture itself. And the sand at the bottom is where I got the idea for the color of the mat. Because that way it doesn't take away from the picture itself. It um, truly uh, allows the picture to be the focal point and the mat just sort of uh, fades into the background. Uh, but it doesn't compete with those colors. Um, my framer, Marla, um, who owns her, the frame shop that I go to, uh, we tried uh, picking up the greens and the blues at first and it just competed with the picture so terribly, neither of us liked it. 
but then once we got to the um, color of the sand, we both felt it looked great. I'm trying to get some of that glare off, but I don't think it's possible. There we go. That's a little bit better. Anyway, um, I've already talked about this in a finished video, so I won't belabor the point, but I did want you to see the frame. I thought it was really pretty, and um, now I'm going to be sending it off uh, to my friend as her gift, and I'll be busy stitching on other things, so until I have another piece to show you for an update, I wish you happy stitching, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Good morning, Plus Two. This is Dina. And I'm coming to you on Tuesday, February the 1st, for a small update. I wanted to show you my progress on my latest whip and a new start. So here's my progress on the whip I've been working on this past week. And it is called Children's Garden. I think you've probably um, been able to see this before. I started this piece for a sal, the Know Your ABC sal, and was only working on it one day a month um, because I was doing the um, letters along the sal in the alphabet. Well, I finished all the letters, <laughs> but uh, I continued to work on it that one day a month until I finished Beach Babies, and then I decided to go ahead and put it in my rotation and work on it <clears throat> maybe a little bit more than one day a month. I would try to put the piece in my rotation around that date each month of the 26th, but work on it two or three days. So that's what I did this time, and um, I started on the 26th and worked to about the 29th or so and I finally got a chance to video it today to show you where I'm at. So I'll give you my progress. This time, I worked, fold it where you can see it, I think. I worked over here on the little girl. When you saw it last, I had just started on her dress. If you'll see, there are little gold and red, um, Flecks, which I think are supposed to be little flowers in the fabric of her dress and I had those completed I think probably on a diagonal I was working my way down I was about right here with just the golden red flecks so on this rotation I was able to finish the dress and I'm very excited about that and then I went ahead and did her little hand and did the back stitching on her face and hand. You can see she has a little, a cute little face now. And there's her hand. She'll be holding a, a hoe. I think they're gardening, her and her little brother. Um, and then you can see the edge of the border with the green for the grass that I finished there. So that bottom corner is now complete. So, on my next rotation, at the end of this month, I will come back over here, I think, and try to do the same thing to the little boy. I'll try to get his clothes done and maybe that bottom corner so I have the bottom uh, that I can then work across and I'll have the piece completed from here down. Now, the top of it is going to be pretty busy. It's got that beautiful floral arch over it and the background but if I can get the little boy completed on the next rotation then I could foresee do the bottom all the way across maybe in um, March and then I'll only have that top portion to do for a finish and this might be my next finish for the year of whips this is a year of whip piece so um, who knows this may wind up being finished up before uh, Smoky Mountain Christmas or Firefly Fairies or any of my other whips that I have left in the year of whips. So I'm pretty excited <laughs> about how much I got done on that, uh, working on it for three full days. That helped a lot. Um, so now um, I'm anxious to see that one come to completion. I think it's a pretty piece. 
I think it would make a, a lovely companion to my Emma's garden, which is hanging in my sewing room. So uh, I'm looking forward to putting those together. Okay, new start. You might be wondering, I'm in the year of whips. Why did I do a new start? Well, <clears throat> I decided with all the old magazines that I have, that it would be a fun idea to join in on the magazine sale um, that Heather Stitches and Susan uh, have um, from Cross My Stitch have um, put together a Facebook group to do this year. And it's a minimum of one uh, pattern from a magazine per month that you work on. And it doesn't have to be a new start every time. And you're not limited to one, but to work on at least one per month. So in January, I worked on my 12 Days of Christmas, since that's from a magazine. And I actually finished the first two um, from where I had started those in the 12 Days of Stitchmas. But rather than do those just every month, I thought about what my plans were for this year, and if you'll recall, I mentioned I would like to do some patriotic pieces for a tree ornament, because um, I have a little ornament tree that I like to uh, put up for our different holidays. And um, in this case, I'm trying to do some ornaments for 4th of July. I don't have any 4th of July ornaments for the tree. I don't have any decorations for the tree. Uh, for July 4th and I would like to do that so I started that for February so this is a very old magazine it's cross stitch and country crafts and it's actually the July August 1986 book <laughs> oh my I've been collecting these a long time I told you I've been stitching my whole life um, so the one I'm going to be doing and Unfortunately, the picture of it is the pattern. So I'm going to try to cover this up and show you a um, picture down below, a smaller picture. They've made them into ribbons, but I'm going to make them into tree ornaments. But this is the one I've started on right here. And then I'm thinking about doing this one to go with it so that I'll have two ovals. Um, together but it actually says and the Star Spangled Banner oh long may she wave um, and I thought those would be two quick ornaments that I could probably potentially start and finish in a couple of months and so I've started uh, the first one today I have a small start so far today just the top of that flag there getting started and this is where the saying will be. I'm just doing these on 18 count white Ada. I picked the stark white Ada because of course red, white, and blue. I thought that would go with the theme pretty well. And uh, I have put, it's easy to get. I can get as much as I want and I go from there. So I got started on that. So that's for my magazine sale. And when I finish working on that today, I've only given it one day this month because I, I do have uh, quite a bit that I want to work on for my year of whips. But um, when I get the end of my progress today, I'll post a picture in that face group to show uh, what I've done for this month for my magazine sale. And I'll move on to my next whip that's in my rotation. So that's about it for the hair this morning. I just wanted to come and, and give you an update on what I was up to. And uh, I tell you good morning and wish you happy stitching for the month of February. Bye. Hello, Floss Tube. It's a little bit later in the day, quite a bit later actually on February 1st, and I think I may have said this was Tuesday before I've lost today. It's Wednesday. Anyway, I've been working a good bit of the day on my um, magazine sale piece, and it is entitled um, "Old uh, For Old Glory, and I showed you a picture of it earlier, and I'll try and show you again. I have to cover up the pattern because it's right above it. 
but there's the little ribbon or uh, they were making them into ribbons, the little piece. This is for my ornament tree that I want to do for 4th of July. So I'm excited to let you know I finished it today. <laughs> so here it is. This is for Old Glory. And um, I'm excited about having a finish in a day. I haven't done that in a long, long time. I've got my initials and the year on there. So I just thought that was a great little stitch. Um, haven't worked on Ada in a in a while and so it was so easy to see I was really excited even though it's 18 count I could do it most of the day without the magnifying glass and then as it got toward the end of the day uh, as like my eyes got tired uh, I did look through the magnifier just to rest my eyes a bit uh, it's about nine o'clock and I've worked on this two or three times today as I could in between my household chores and uh, having lunch with my son and other things that I had to do today, but I am excited about finishing it. So I'll be posting this in the uh, Magazine Sal Facebook group uh, for the month of February, and uh, I'll have um, my uh, second finish for 2017. It's a new start today and a finish today, so that's a pretty good way to get my second finish. It's not in my year of whips, <laughs> so it doesn't count there. But I'll be starting my rotation on my next whip for that uh, tomorrow. So looking forward to doing that. I hope you've had a great stitchy day today. I hope you've hit your goals today that you set. And if not, there's always tomorrow. Enjoy. Don't stress over it. Don't make this a job. Um, if it were my job, I would love it. <laughs> I can't imagine having a better job than cross-stitching. Um, but enjoy what you're stitching on and have a wonderful rest of the week. And I will see you back on Friday when I actually do the drawing for the Pass the Stash uh, Beach Babies. I, I hope if you've signed up uh, that you're lucky and that you're the winner. <laughs> so you guys have a great week and I'll see you back again when I'm pulling the winner for uh, Beach Babies Past the Stash. So long. Bye-bye. Hello, Floss Tube. This is Dina. It's Friday, February the 3rd, and it's time for the drawing for the Past the Stash. And I'll remind you, this is for the Beach Babies pattern that I recently finished. And for all the threads to go with it, fabric included. So I had 29 people who were interested in this giveaway and had submitted their favorite beach memories uh, to share with me so that um, they would let me know they were interested in the pattern that way. So I've got my random number generator up and I'm going to... Uh, show that to you as I go and um, I'll pause here and turn the camera around. I can't do it live so I'll have to pause it and turn it around and then I'll start live again and show you the number generator and we'll announce the winner. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, here we are. I have pulled up the random number generator on my iPad. I've put in 1 through 29 and we are going to hit the button to generate. And we have number 26, which is Linda Craig. Linda Craig. If you will get in touch with me, Linda, and let me know where to mail this package to you, then I will be happy to get it in the mail coming your way. Congratulations, Linda Craig.